Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime. We have four stories for you guys. Again, timestamps down below to skip to the ones that you care about. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to remind you we are giving away three copies of Pokemon Legends Arceus to enter. You just got to click on that viral sweep link down in the description or the pinned comment. Also, we are on our road to 80,000 subscribers. So if you guys would hit that subscribe button, I would be just tickled, I guess, uh, because we are trying to hit 80,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Uh, and if we pull that off, there'll be something special uh, planned for you guys, a very special event that I'm slowly working on just in case we happen to hit that target goal. That being said, we technically are also giving away a $99 Nintendo Switch eShop gift card over on Twitter. I'll put a link to that in the pinned comment. Uh, but the thing is, we don't actually give that away until we hit 80,000 subscribers. Now, we don't have to hit 80,000 this month for that thing to trigger, but yeah, that's just something I wanted to let you guys know just to be fair to our entire audience. All right, folks, that being said, let's get into some of the stories that we have for you today because whew, it's going to be an interesting one. And our first one deals with the Game Awards. Actually, it's funny. Our first stories with the Game Awards and our last stories with the Game Awards kind of see the theme for the week. We have the Game Awards on Thursday where we're, we are an official co-streamer. But this first story deals with something that Jeff Keighley has officially announced as of this morning, and that is news regarding Sonic. So, yeah, we talk about you know Zelda's 35th anniversary and Pokemon's 25th anniversary and Donkey Kong's 40th anniversary, but it's also the 30th anniversary for the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. And he said that we are going to get 30th anniversary news at the Game Awards. And you might go, okay, so now we get into speculation, except we don't actually have to speculate on what the news is, because Jeff Keighley straight up told us Jim Carrey is going to be there in person uh, to unveil the first trailer for the new Sonic movie that is going to be coming out in April. So cool, we're going to see the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 movie. Uh, that's really good, because the first one was actually pretty decent. Now, beyond that, though, that's not really what you guys are probably going to be excited for, although maybe you are. Uh, he also said we're going to be seeing the new game, the new Sonic game. So that game, Sonic Frontiers, is basically what we think it's called, uh, that was unveiled earlier this year, sort of, just sh kind of showed Sonic's feet running. We didn't really actually see any gameplay. It's being unveiled at the Game Awards. So... Woo! We're going to see Sonic the Hedgehog's new game for 2022. I'm really excited about that. Um, I wonder if you guys are as excited as I am about it because, man, oh, man, oh, man. Um, I know, like, we have a few fans that have, like, Sonic in their usernames that are probably just, woo! Um, but, again, when we hear news like this, it becomes harder and harder to hype responsibly for the Game Awards because now we know we are getting this certain thing and Sonic, that new Sonic game is also supposed to be coming to Nintendo Switch as well. So yeah, this is going to be a really, really exciting show just from that perspective. This is just something we know for sure. We're seeing the brand new Sonic game at the Game Awards. It's happening. All the Nintendo stuff might be speculation, this is something we know for sure, and it's supposed to come to Switch, let alone all other platforms. So let's uh, try to keep our hype in check. Let's, we'll talk more about this, by the way, tonight on the Nintendo Prime Podcast. We have Tim Geddes from Kind of Funny Games guesting on our podcast tonight. We'll obviously be talking about some various Game Awards uh, topics along with a few other things as well. Uh, but yeah, we'll obviously bring this up uh, and get his thoughts, obviously, on Sonic being at the Game Awards. So our next story is sort of an update on some launch figures. So according to GameBiz.jp, a Japanese journalist website, uh, they have put out there that Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl during its launch week, so not launch month, not, you know, you know LTD, you know, lifetime to date, just in the first week of sales or the first opening few days of sales since launch week is usually typically like two days. Um, yeah, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl worldwide, according to them, has sold over 6 million copies. Now to put this in perspective, that is double the amount of copies that Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee sold during its launch week, and it's actually right in line with what Sword and Shield sold in its launch week, showing the infinite popularity of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Uh, now, obviously Sword and Shield we know has really established itself as one of the best-selling entries in the entire Pokemon franchise, selling over 20 million units. Is Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl going to join that? I have no idea, but clearly it's been a big success for Game Freak, and they must love how well this game is doing, considering that it was outsourced. This could lead to them outsourcing future, um, you know, Pokemon remakes 
ports, reboots, whatever you want to call them, remasters uh, in the future because as much as people want to complain about the art style and, and some other things in the game, apparently it's making people plenty happy to go out and buy it in huge droves. So yeah, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shiny Pearl is actually performing very, very well. I'm actually surprised that it's performing as well as it, is, as it is, but maybe I shouldn't be because Pokemon always sells well, but it doesn't always sell this well. It also makes me wonder, is Pokemon Legends Arceus potentially going to break some records? I don't know what the hype level is around that in comparison to a traditional Pokemon game, but if it is at the level that I think it is, just wait for launch sales of Pokemon Legends Arceus. That's a single game, not a dual game release. So our next story deals with the Nintendo Switch outage yesterday. So for a long time, it was like five, six, seven hours. I don't know, it was, it was, it was different in different regions, but uh, the Nintendo Switch services were down. This included the eShop, this included Nintendo Switch Online. So like if you had a second Switch and you had to verify, you know, a digital copy, you know, by logging in online, you couldn't do that. That's an issue I had yesterday, trying to play Pokemon Brilliant Diamond myself. Uh, uh, it was cleaned up by the time we did our live stream. The live stream started a little bit later because of it, but still, um, it was a very interesting situation to deal with, uh, and people were getting really angry at Nintendo. There were videos and comments all over the place that people pissed at Nintendo. You charge us for services now, and your services are going down like this during prime gaming time, uh, you know, really late afternoon, right after school is out, all the way through the evening. That it was unacceptable to many people, especially when they're like, man, we didn't get these outages with the 3DS. We didn't get these sort of outages with the Wii U. What the hell, man? Nintendo, screw you. You give us crappy online services, crappy expansion pack, and then everything goes down and we can't even play our games. What the hell? Screw you. Turns out it really had nothing to do with Nintendo after all. Nintendo's services are all using Amazon's servers. So Amazon Web Services is what Nintendo runs everything off of. Now, Amazon is actually one of the best um, server platforms in the world. Um, they actually run something like 30% of all of the online functionality in the world. So like they're very reliable along with Google and Microsoft. Those are the big three in the server realm for running all these online services and websites and everything. And the problem is it went out unexpectedly and took a long time to come back and Nintendo wasn't just the only one affected. A bunch of websites were taken out, a whole bunch of services were taken out. I mean, some notable ones that you guys might recognize, Disney was having issues with Disney Plus wasn't working. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, like League of Legends, you know, they run on Amazon servers as well. That wasn't working and that was a big deal for League players. So yeah, it wasn't just Nintendo and we can't really blame Nintendo. You'd be like, well, Nintendo should have went with Google servers or Microsoft. It's kind of a, a crapshoot. This could have happened to anyone. Now, the big thing is we don't actually know why the, the services went down, what caused those servers to go offline and crash. There's usually a lot of redundancy at these server farms. And even if there was like a massive power outage, usually there's backup generators that can kick in and keep things going at least at a certain level. Uh, so yeah, it was really strange and Amazon hasn't really talked about it publicly. Uh, a lot of the companies have said, hey, we're down. Oh, hey, here's where we're gonna go. Oh, hey, it was unexpected. Our, our servers are down. But nobody really knows the public reason of what caused it. But everything is back up, obviously, as of now. It actually all came back up last night. So for whatever was happening uh, with those servers, hopefully it's been resolved uh, and we don't have to worry about it again. This is just kind of a thing that happens with technology. Sometimes online stuff is going to go offline. It just happens. We can't predict every single outage that's ever going to occur. And that's even from the companies that are running this stuff. They can have all the redundancies in the world happening. And I know this from being someone who's worked in networking and IT, like, you can have all the redundancies you want. It doesn't necessarily mean you could stop something like this. So yeah, that is just something that we had to deal with yesterday. Um, you know what? It's not the end of the world, folks. There's more to life than video games. Believe it or not, folks, there's more to life than video games. Like me, I went outside and went sledding in my driveway because I used to do that when I was a kid and it was fun. And I took my kids out there and we ran out of the garage and whew, right down the side, the side uh, the driveway because, you know, we have snow and all that because I live in Wisconsin and we deal with winter for nine months. So this last story is actually pure speculation on my part, but it's built upon other things that we've seen. So Samus Hunter way back when, I mean, way back when, we're talking like a week, two weeks ago, uh, stated that we, you know, this was a rumor we did that there is going to be Zelda 35th stuff at the Game Awards. Obviously since then, there's been other rumors and reports that, oh, it's gonna be Breath of the Wild 2, oh, it's gonna be, you know, The Wind Waker, Twilight Princess HD, oh, it's just gonna be, a, you know, a music being played. I don't know, I've been telling you guys this whole time to hype responsibly and, you know, 
I don't really know if I expect to see anything Zelda there. I'm trying to keep my expectations low because obviously Zelda is my favorite IP. So if there's one thing I can get overhyped about, it's Zelda. So we're, I'm going to kind of dial it back there. However, um, something just came from Nintendo themselves that makes you wonder. It's kind of a convenient could just be circumstantial, might not actually mean anything, but we're gonna mention this anyways because I think it's notable that this is the week that it happened. So Nintendo has their own podcast. Like we have a podcast going up today, but Nintendo actually has their own. They brought Nintendo Power, that magazine thing, back, but they brought it back as a podcast. They did this a while ago. Uh, and they have episodes coming out, you know, pretty frequently. Uh, and on their most recent episode, which dropped late yesterday, uh, they uploaded it to the official Nintendo YouTube channel, which is what they always do. And yeah, the whole topic of like the brux of the of the thing, it's over 50% of the podcast, is just about the Zelda 35th anniversary, to the point that they titled it around the Zelda 35th anniversary. Now, I happened to listen to it this morning, and yeah, there's not any new news in there. It's just the people on the cast are just talking about their favorite Zelda games and, and, and what they love about the series, what the series means to them, and that's all great and dandy. But I find it interesting that that podcast, talking about the 35th anniversary of Zelda, dropped this week. Um, this week is not like a special celebration for the 35th anniversary of Zelda. 35th anniversary of Zelda happened back in February, February 21st to be exact. So it's been a hell of a long time since then to suddenly talk about the 35th anniversary now. Also, Nintendo briefly touched upon the 35th anniversary back in June by announcing the Zelda Game & Watch, and, you know, AJ Nomo came on stage, or on stage, on video, and just told you directly that this was for the 35th anniversary. So that would have been maybe an opportunity to also talk about the 35th anniversary again, and they didn't on any of their podcasts. And then, fast forward again, well, when the Zelda Game Watch comes out, which it did, you know, last month, that could have been another opportunity to maybe talk about Zelda's 35th anniversary. And again, the Nintendo Power Podcast, which is Nintendo's official podcast, these are Nintendo employees, didn't talk about it. Yet here we are, a day before the Game Awards, where there's rumors circulating that there's going to be Zelda 35th stuff there, and here they are talking about the Zelda 35th anniversary again. I told you this is speculation. I told you we aren't sure where this is going to lead. However, I do just find it kind of convenient that with the rumor circling, suddenly now is when they choose, you know, to talk about the Zelda 35th anniversary in December, which isn't a notable 35th anniversary date in any region in the world. There's not a single region in the world where December is specifically the 35th anniversary of Zelda. So you could try to argue, oh, maybe this is because of the UK or the US or other territories where this is now the 30th. No, no. The 35th anniversary date doesn't line up in December for any territory. So yeah, that doesn't really line up. So why the hell are they talking about it now? It could just be because they had nothing else to talk about, which I find that rather hard to say they have nothing else to talk about. You know, Big Brain Academy just came out quite recently, literally like a handful of days ago. So that could have been a big topic for this one. They could have talked about that. Um, they could have went deeper dive into Shin Megami Tensei 5, brought up Pokemon again, because those are obviously more recent releases. They could have talked about upcoming games that are already announced, like Sparks of Hope or uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus. They could have brought up a bunch of different topics, but they specifically chose this week to drop their big topic for the Zelda 35th anniversary. And you can argue, well, it's because we're getting to the end of the year and they haven't talked about it all year. Sure. You guess you could say that, but then why aren't they talking about Pokemon's 25th, or Donkey Kong's 40th, or Metroid's 35th? They're specifically choosing Zelda. I'm just pointing out that it's kind of convenient. Again, might not mean anything, but if we get Zelda 35th anniversary news at the Game Awards, just know this might be might have been Nintendo hinting at that ahead of time without actually confirming anything. So just keep that in the back of your mind as we head into the Game Awards, but always hype responsibly. I want to thank all you guys for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rubble Jance from Nintendo Prime. Uh, I know some people don't always understand my name when I say it, so let me slow it down for you a little bit for those of you that actually wonder what my real name is because you want to Google me and find out dumb crap about me. It's Nathaniel Rumpful hyphen Jance, J-A-N-C, I do not hide. I've been in the public eye for 
decades now. So um, have fun if you want to Google me and find out some dumb crap about me. Anyways, folks, um, thank you so much for tuning in. I had a lovely time today. I can't wait to see all of you guys at tonight's Nintendo Prime Podcast live stream right here on this channel and upload it after the fact at the Nintendo Prime Podcast channel. Please go subscribe to that podcast channel because eventually we want to run all of our podcasts over there uh, live. I don't know when that's going to happen. We got to wait for all the features and viewership to be good up there. But anyways, thank you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.